So hi, Microbe Hunter here again. Another question today, um, this time about metallurgical microscopes or so-called material sciences microscopes. So I'll read out the question here. I'm recently interested in sharpening knives and I was wondering about seeing the blade in a microscope. The classical compound microscopes probably would not work since the blades don't let light pass through. The stereo microscopes don't have enough resolution. Then I saw these metallurgical microscopes uh, which shine light through the objective on the object. Some have an addition of a classical pass-through light setup. I'm wondering why are they not much more popular also for general microscopy? It seems uh, such a good idea. Some children microscopes have an extra lamp in the arm which serves as the same purpose. Is there something I'm missing? Is it uh, the price that holds most people back or are there limitations in the optics that make such microscopes a bad choice for general use? Thanks and best wishes. Thank you for the question. Um, yeah, I need to explain the following. I think, I mean, I'm not into sharpening of knives, but I think that a stereo microscope definitely should work. But your observation is correct. Compound microscopes like these here only um, yeah, have a limited use when observing objects that are um, opaque. Uh, so when you put a knife, um, here I've got one <laughs> under the microscope here. You can actually look at it if you use the low power objective um, and uh, then you have to shine light on top. Okay, and then you're able to see this uh, in this case with 40 times magnification. The question is now is, is what about uh, material sciences or metallurgical microscopes? Um, what they have is they indeed they have special objectives uh, where there's a separate light path um, which shines light from the top on the ob object and in the center there is the lens that picks up the image. Um, why so complicated? Why not have it like many children's microscopes where there's a lamp uh, on the side? And the reason is, is because um, the object uh, is so large and will actually uh, cover up and cast a shadow. It will cover up the specimen too much and it will not be possible to shine a light from the top from the side. Yeah? And because sometimes, uh, especially with the higher magnifications, the, um, the distance is so extremely small that the working distance is so extremely small that they're shining a light from the top is quite difficult. And you actually the angle has to be very you know, shallow. Um, and then it's casting a shadow from the side and then you need another lamp from the other side. And then the problem with that is, is that the light intensity is not going to be high enough because the magnification is so high. So it's going to be too dark. So you see the whole range of, of, of problems here. And for this reason, um, you have those special purpose microscopes, the metallurgical microscopes that also shine light from the top through the objective on, in a separate light uh, path. Yeah? So of course it makes them more expensive. Um, and of course, because these are special purpose objectives um, and not end consumer devices, of course this drives up the price, no question. If you're interested in buying those anyway, I highly recommend that you um, go shopping a little bit on in second hand, uh, but they not, they're not necessarily quite cheap either. Many children's microscopes, they have a top illumination and this works quite nice um, when working, of course, with a low power objective, but also for the high power objective, it's, uh, the light intensity is not going to be high enough and also the objective is going to be in the way of the light path. So uh, why are they not used more often generally? And the reason is, and this has an optical reason. You see, when you have light passing through um, the specimen from the bottom, what you have is, is that you're even able to see relatively low contrast um, specimens because the light rays will interfere once they have gone uh, once, once it has gone out of um, the specimen. So there are some light rays that go through the specimen, some light rays that go behind it and uh, there's an interference and this actually can mean that even specimens which are relatively transparent um, you are able to see the outline because of the interference um, of the light, the destructive interference. So it actually increases the contrast and especially if down here you have a, a condenser, if you close the condenser, you're actually able to see those uh, sometimes uh, those uh, um, uh, yeah, lines which are called diffraction patterns, which actually help you to um, see the specimen. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, one advantage um, and if you shine now light from the top, what's going to happen is most light's going to actually go through um, all the way because most water specimens or many biological specimens are transparent. So you're losing actually a lot of light um, and it looks, yeah, you don't see a lot. You can actually um, see something similar when you're putting a water sample with paramecia, for example, um, under a stereo microscope for, with light coming from the top, um, they will look very transparent and they will lack contrast. So concerning, uh, considering the fact that uh, with those microscopes, many people actually look at semi-transparent objects um, it's, it's better if the light actually comes from the bottom okay because um, you can then see color better um, and because of the interference and all of these things you can also see um, relatively transparent objects uh, better. So um, of course there's a cost issue um, and uh, just saying that uh, for sharpening knives now like here is 
I personally, I don't know, I'm, I, I, I don't see why stereo microscopes don't have high enough resolution because um, with stereo microscopes, actually, we are working below the resolution limit. It's actually here with those microscopes, the compound ones, where you're actually reaching the resolution limit. But again, it depends very much on, on the type, uh, on the degree, uh, what magnification you want, need. Okay, of course, you need a, for high magnification, you need, of course, a, a better resolution. So, uh, but I think, I don't know, I mean, when I put the uh, knives under the microscope, uh, I can, could even see the, um, the, yeah, it's quite easy to see actually whether a knife was sharpened or not. And even with compound microscopes, it's correct that you're actually only seeing an outline, a contour. But if you see a, a jagged line, yeah, then you actually know that the knife is not sharp. Okay, but you're not able to see the surface, just uh, the edge where the light is um, able uh, to pass through. Okay, um, yeah, pass by. Yeah, so that is actually also possible. Um, yeah, um, so um, I would say the the answer here is there are probably multiple reasons why um, uh, material sciences microscopes are not so used so much in in biology. Maybe also historical reasons. I know I've uh, also received uh, questions from other viewers uh, who bought. Um, uh, uh, metallurgical microscopes to do a general um, uh, amateur microscopy, why not? I think that would be actually quite an interesting thing to explore nature a little bit, not only with stereo microscopes, but with highly magnifying uh, metallurgical microscopes and to see um, how surface structures uh, look. It's an interesting, interesting idea. Well, um, yeah, I don't know if this answers your question, um, but um, I would say uh, why not? Um, if you have the possibility to get a hand on a metallurgical microscope, go ahead. But I would probably, if you don't have one, probably still try um, you know, to put uh, knives and opaque objects directly under the microscope and then try to have some kind of an illumination system with lamps or LEDs still coming from the top. Um, but with high magnifications, it's a little bit of a problem because of the small working distance. And then of course, you can also not benefit from a condenser uh, bundling and focusing the lights together because you've got light coming from the top. So I would say plenty of opportunity for experimentation. Thank you again for the question. Happy micro hunting as always. See you around next time. Bye bye.